Okay, so I've got a, a turbo prop example here. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of states coming into uh, the uh, jet engine. Okay, uh, it's, the compressor has a pressure ratio of 10. Uh, the temperature at the inlet of the turbine is 1140 Kelvin. The pressure at its exit is 50 kilopascal. So I want to know the power delivered to the propeller. Talk about what that is in a second. And then I want to know the velocity uh, out the back end of the um, turboprop engine. Okay. So here's what I need to do. Okay. So first I have my diffuser. Okay, so I've got my temperature, so definitely I'm looking for H value, so I'll go look up HA. Okay, the other thing I'm going to need to do, because going from A to 1, this is an isentropic process, I'm going to use um, PRA. Okay, so I can use that idea here to go from uh, A to 1. Okay, so let's look up those two values for uh, state A, which is 240 Kelvin. So I go in here and I see H is 240.02 and PR is 0.6355. So let me go ahead and jot those down. So that's going to be 240.02 and 0.6355. Okay. Now, this is the diffuser going from um, A to 1. Okay. So what I have here is um, my uh, energy, uh, my first law equation essentially is H1 minus HA, right, the change in enthalpy, okay, uh, is going to equal excuse me, plus V1 uh, squared minus VA squared all over 2 equals 0. So that's my first law equation for this, where the, the, the ch uh, change in enthalpy is essentially equivalent to the change in uh, kinetic energy. Okay? Now, in this situation, it slows down from a pretty high velocity of 180 meters per second to essentially a velocity of zero or a negligible amount compared to that 180. So again, I know VA and I know HA. The only thing I don't know here is H1. So from that equation, from my first law equation, I can determine what H1 is, which is 256.22. And what I will do with that is then, because this is isentropic, I'm going to go ahead and look up PR1, this will help me find my pressure. So knowing that my H is 256.22, I can see that I'm somewhere in between these two values, meaning my PR is somewhere in between these two values, which I actually find to be 0 0.79902. Okay. Now that I have that, I can actually calculate P1 going into the compressor. Okay, and again, I do that by P1 over PA equals PR1 over PRA. And again, knowing those relative pressures, knowing PA, I can find P1, and I get P1 equals to 50.29 kilopascal. Okay, so that sets state one. Now going to state two, this is where my I've got my compressor ratio. Okay, so this goes from 50.29 to P2 of 502.9 kilopascals. Okay, and the other thing I know, this is a compressor, so it's also isentropic. So I'm going to use that isentropic, uh, use those relative pressures to figure out what's going on at state 2, which is to say PR2 over PR1 equals P2 over P1, which is 10 which gives me PR2 to be 10 times what PR1 is, which is going to be 7.9902. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and look up H2, which is what I'm looking for here. So 
I go 7.992, or 9902, 7.99, essentially I scroll down. It's right here, it's just a little above here. My age is going to be down now, 495 or something. It'll be 495.65. So H2 is 495.65. Okay. So then I go through uh, the combustor. This one's easy. I can go ahead and look up H3. Okay. And I'm going to look up PR3. Okay. Knowing that, I guess P3 is constant across uh, heat addition. So that's going to be 502.9 kilopascal. So let me go ahead and look up H3 and PR3. So this one's at 1140, so I'm way over here. So I get an H of 1207.57 and a PR of 193.1. So I get uh, 1207.57 and 57. And I get a PR3 of 193.1. Okay? So now I go through the turbine. And again, the turbine is also isentropic. So I can say, okay, PR, oops, PR4 over PR3 equals P4 over P3. And again, it gives me what P4 is. So I know P4 over P3. I know PR3. I can easily then find PR4, and PR4 then equals 19.199, again, using that pressure ratio. Okay, so knowing that my PR4 is 19.2, I can look up H4. And I get H4 equal to, uh, sorry, that's at 19.2. You write in here somewhere, which is going to be 6, uh, what is that going to be? 634.06. Okay. Now, the other thing that I know is this thing gets pumped out at the same pressure that it gets pumped in at. So P5 is 40 kilopascals. The other thing I know is that for the uh, nozzle, it is also isentropic. So I can say, OK, PR5 over PR4 equals P5 over P4. Again, I know my pressure ratio. From that, I can find PR5. PR5 equals uh, 23.84. From that, I can look at H5, 23.84. It's going to be right in here, where my H then is going to be 676.17. And there you have it. Okay. So I've set all of my states here to figure this out. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do is find the what uh, power is developed to the propeller. Okay. Remember that essentially on the turbine, the turbine just runs the compressor. Any power left over is what goes to the propeller. So really, the work of the propeller. Okay. Is just going to be basically the work of the turbine minus uh, the work of the compressor. Whatever is left over there, that is the work of the turbine. Now, before I do that, I suppose I need to find my mass flow rate, right? Because this is going to be the mass flow rate times, uh, again, that'll be uh, H3 minus H4 minus H2 minus H1. Okay, and my mass flow rate. I can find 
knowing the volumetric flow right here, right? Where I'm going to have that volume, oops, that volumetric flow at one. Again, that's over V, but for, not at one, at A, excuse me. But for an ideal gas, that's going to be given by uh, P, or RT over P. So again, this is volumetric flow over the um, specific volume, which for an ideal gas is RT over P. Again, I know T, I know P, I know R. I can calculate the mass flow rate to be 48.6 kilograms per second. Knowing that mass flow rate, knowing all my H values, I can find the work delivered to the propeller, which again is what's left over after the turbine finishes running the compressor, and what's left over is 10 megawatts of power when I plug in all of my H values there. Okay. Then the last thing I want to find is, hey, what's the velocity over here? And again, I'm going to use a similar idea that I used over here, which is to say, um, H5 minus H4 plus V5 squared minus V4 squared, right? So it's essentially the change in enthalpy is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And again, my velocity in this range is so much smaller than what's coming into the diffuser and out of the nozzle that I assume it's zero. So I can find that V5 just by delta H times 2 square root, all that stuff. Do some uh, unit analysis, and I get 296.4 meters per second. Okay. So that's how we deal with the turboprop. Again, keeping track of your pressures all the way through so that you can use your PR values all the way through to figure out those isentropic processes, figure out those H values. Once I get all my H values, you solve what you want, okay? Um, to deal with, the, again, with the diffuser or a nozzle, it's basically a change in enthalpy, it's a change in kinetic energy. So you get an equation that looks like this, uh, and you can back out then the, uh, the velocity coming out, which is uh, quite large.